The following presentation was recorded at the 2012 Southeast Linux Fest in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following Diamond Sponsors in 2012 for helping make these videos possible. So I, what I started to ask was, how many people here know what I'm talking about when I talk about page manager and panels? Just a, just a, a portion of you, okay. So what, um, the idea here is this is not going to be um, an all-encompassing um, training on a page manager and panels. We wouldn't be able to do that in an hour. Um, in fact, earlier this week I did a session on on this very subject and it was close to three hours and we didn't even cover all of it. So, um, didn't come close in fact. So, um, but at least the idea here is that you'll get an idea of what it is, what it can do and why you might want to consider it as you build sites. So, um, you know, I, what I, I just realized that what I forgot to do in this session um, was add in some slides about myself. So, let me <laughs> jump in a little bit about that. My name is Jim Smith, and I am the director of um, online media at a TV station in Knoxville, Tennessee, W-A-T-E. Um, the website that is um, uh, the main news site for W-A-T-E is not a Drupal site. And um, it is actually uh, a site that was built in a closed proprietary system that we hire a vendor to maintain for us. And um, it's this that was doing that. Sorry. Um, it uh, and it was for that very reason that I started looking for an open source content management system that I could put on my own server. And uh, what the idea was was to just to um, build pages that look like my site but would let me do things that I couldn't in that closed system. And after trying a few different content management systems, I, um, I actually went back to Drupal because Drupal was one of the first ones that I had tested and I didn't like it. But this, this was back version 4.5 or something like that. And um, it, th that version was very hard to install. Um, since then, it's, um, they've made a lot of they, they had made a lot of changes when I tried it again. It was um, uh, actually, I could see the benefits of using Drupal and, and I've been using it ever since, not just in mimicking the, the site of the TV station, but uh, in doing some um, uh, one-off type sites. Uh, and then um, a few years ago, I started doing uh, freelance work. And so I uh, have sort of a side business where I do freelance site building, and also uh, training. So uh, what we're going to talk today about, as I said, is panels and page manager. And um, so maybe if some of you have uh, heard Drupal compared to Legos. And I think it's an apt um, comparison. If you think about um, all that Legos is, um, you have um, these interlocking blocks the, that, um, that in and of themselves don't do a lot, but when you add them all together in the right combination, you can make some incredible things. And some of those blocks are really specialty things, uh, you know, like the little characters and things. That, um, they only have maybe one use to them, but some of them are very generic and they have multiple uses. And it all depends on how you put them together. Um, I found this um, quote that was uh, a part of a discussion um, at Drupal.org that I think um, speaks well to it. Um, and one of the things, though, is that, it, it, you know, it, um, Steve is admitting that Drupal is hard to learn sometimes, and it takes time to learn the pieces, but um, if, if you play with it, you can get a lot out of it, and, and you can learn a lot. So, oops. Um, it, sometimes, though, it seems like all it is is just a jumbled mess. So, uh, what we're, um, one of the things about um, Drupal is if you, if you break it down into um, the different parts, it helps a lot. So um, the, do you understand Drupal's um, structure, 
there is a data model or the content which is stored in the database and then um, that gets, pieces of that get pulled in nodes and in views um, to create the actual content display which is arranged by a layout um, and then on top of that is the, uh, the, the prettification, if you will, of the, the content. And that's uh, um, expressed a little bit more specifically by the content types that Drupal uses to create the nodes, then fields and views that um, are combined together to um, display the nodes and blocks. And then, of course, you have to have HTML and CSS to make it look like something on your site. And that's the basic idea of every Drupal site. Um, now, a lot of that is being done at the theme layer. And the, um, this is just a kind of a basic understanding of what we're talking about when we're talking about a theme, is that it's a combination of lots of things. But it, it, it's, it's managing the layout and design elements of content. And that's what theme is, that's the sole purpose. Typically, um, in, in, in any Drupal site, you're going to see um, these areas where you have content, blocks, a menu, a logo. Some of that is being managed by a, the block system. Some of it's coming from the, um, the, the content output of either the node or views. And then you have, um, in a typical theme, you have specific calls to the menu and logos and things like that. Then the, all that is being managed at, um, uh, the output of that is, is controlled in, the, in terms of its layout and what have you by the theme. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about something that adds a layer to this, and that's panels. Um, and we'll get into page manager as well, but panels, um, is a contributed module that um, m can manage all of the blocks, nodes, menus, and forms, and, and provides a layout control that's, that's beyond what the theme does. Then um, in a normal panels installation, you have, you've taken the content area, and you're letting panels handle that, whereas there's still elements of the, there's still elements of the um, uh, other regions of the page that are being handled by Drupal, and so Panels is um, just giving you additional layout options within the content area. Then there's something um, called Panels Everywhere, which takes um, the idea of panels and extends it to the entire page. In fact, what it does is it, um, it overrides the core block system that Drupal uses and um, pretty much makes that whole um, uh, part of the Drupal site um, obsolete. So everywhere on the page, if you will, is a, a pane of the panels. One other thing that we have to talk about a little bit, we're not going to get in depth about it, is um, views. And views is, uh, I'm going to, give me one second. I just realized that I forgot to do something here that I'm going to need to, um, before I get too far along, I won't be able to demo this if I don't turn this on. Let that run behind. I'm sorry, I just realized with the problems I had with the computer earlier that I forgot all about, oops. Go back to the one moment, please. Te technical difficulties. Okay. Sorry about that. So um, we were talking about views. It turns out that views module and panels module and page manager and all that are all written by the same um, developer. Um, his name is Earl Miles. He goes by the name um, Earl of Chaos, or Merlin of Chaos. And um, he, uh, he, if you were in Ken Rickard's um, presentation this morning, his keynote this morning, you heard uh, mention of, of 
um, Earl and the, 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 the major contributions that he has made to Drupal. Um, what he did was um, he uh, um, was able to um, create uh, these, uh, well, I'll get into that a little later. Let me jump into this part. Um, let's, what we're talking about now is the themes and panels idea that we were talking about a moment ago. Um, the differences that panels does um, to the site compared to themes. Um, you always have to have a theme. Panels never replaces the theme, even when it's panels everywhere. There are still, you still have to have a theme. It's just that panels takes care of the layout por portions of the, um, the layout. There are um, lo lots of um, logic that has to be written by the themer in a theme, whereas almost all of that is managed by the code inside the module in panels. So if you're not a coder, you can still do some um, elaborate things with uh, managing the, the output of your content um, w without having to worry about writing code. And then um, one of the things that the theme does is to um, divide up the content into different parts of the page, but that requires lots of different files that if you, every time you want to have a particularly um, unique layout, you have to have a new file. Um, and then you, so a lot of times you have to write a digital code to manage when those files get used. Whereas um, Panels is able to do that as on its own. Um, so there, when you're doing with themes, you, you're just dealing with straight code. You don't have a user interface that you can um, visualize that layout, whereas Panels is very visual. As we'll see in a little bit, you can see how you can just place your panels in around, around the page. Um, we do require some um, programming language or knowledge to be able to change layouts, um, at least a little bit of PHP. It's not a lot, but you, um, uh, it's, you have to use a little bit. Whereas with um, panels, you really don't have to um, know um, how to write code at all, although there are if you get really elaborate, you can um, uh, run into some situations where a little coding will help, but it's not necessary. Um, and then you're still using the, the core block system, or in some cases, if you choose to, you can use the context module to, to manage um, your blocks, whereas with panels, um, and especially with panels everywhere, um, all the regions can be managed. So uh, let's take a look now, comparison panels to the block system. In um, Drupal 6, all blocks are rendered to even those that are not on a page. And that's an important distinction because that affects um, the, uh, the amount of um, processing power that your, um, your server needs to, because it's, what it's doing is it's rendering blocks even though they're not displayed. If you have 12 regions on a page, it, um, it will want to render those even though the specific display doesn't call for any blocks to appear on that. Now, they fixed that in Drupal 7, fortunately. But in um, panels, um, the, it's, it's never been an issue. Um, with uh, using the block system, there is in Drupal a way to cache blocks, but it's basically an all or nothing situation where you can, you turn on a, a setting in the configuration for caching blocks and you can, um, you can do that, but all the blocks are cached in the same manner. Whereas with panels, there is a, a pluggable mechanism that um, allows you to, to select when, um, or where you want um, caching to take place, and you can control the length of time specific to each individual block. The other thing that Panels does is it provides a drag and drop um, method of moving content around the page, so it, it, it is very visual, um, and it also allows for a contextual control over those, so you can have um, certain um, parts of that page display for certain users or um, only when other content is displayed on that page and not others, and it gives you a, a great deal of control over um, 
when and where and how the, the content is displayed. Going back to panels everywhere, it extends it even further, as we said, and um, it also pretty much eliminates the need for layout files because uh, other, although you still have to have a basic theme page um, file, you don't need um, to worry about the other display areas. Then there's something else that comes with panels, and that's called mini panels. It um, is essentially the idea that panels is, except it can, uh, allows you to um, have a section of panels that are embedded in other panels. If that, if that doesn't seem like a very good explanation, um, here's an example where this is a panels page, and these are, uh, this is a mini panel of three panes with, that are embedded within the other um, panels that are, and w the nice thing about uh, mini panels is they can be reused um, throughout your site. So you can do some really complex kinds of layouts if you want because um, you, the same kinds of layouts that you can do in panels, you can do in mini panels. There is one basic problem with panels, and that is that the, the uh, user interface for, um, for using it is rather complex, um, but it's only complex to start with. When you, first, when you first get into it. Later on, you'll see, um, as you, if you get an understanding of where the pieces are, it's no more complex than anything else that Drupal has. Um, as I said, there's one other part to all of this, and that's called Page Manager. And Page Manager is, if you think of it, it's, it, um, it, it's just a um, way of managing page types um, and, but, we, we don't want to confuse that with content types. Um, so, in fact, just think of it as a redirect machine. What, what it does is it, um, it, it evaluates the settings on that you've given it and then decides whether that is go um, going to deliver the page or not. C Tools is another module that Earl Miles wrote that, um, and in fact, that's what um, Page Manager comes in. And um, the reason why uh, C Tools is re its real name is Chaos Tools, as in um, Merlin of Chaos. Um, the C, C Tools is really a way for him to be able to reuse code that he wrote for views in panels. So um, you you need C Tools for either um, views or panel. Or, or do you need C Tools for views? I don't forgotten now. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. yeah. Um, that um, it's, it's a way of sharing some code that both would use anyway and rather than having to duplicate it. But C Tools does a lot of other things. It allows you to create custom content panes. Um, it allows you to bolt export c content. And, um, and these are all independent of whether you're using um, one or the other. And then there's uh, something called Stylizer, which um, is a way to create some um, s settings for the, the display of an area that can be, th then that can be reused um, over and over just by selecting that style. Um, I won't be getting into that any further than just mentioning it here, but um, it is something that um, is worth looking into if you get into panels. Um, so, to help understand how page manager and panels work, um, it's good to uh, first understand a little bit of the terminology. Um, one um, word that sometimes causes a little bit of confusion is variant. Um, it is the, um, the settings that determine whether or not the page is rendered. So um, you can have lots and lots of variants, um, but each one is set to de determine um, a uh, type of page or um, a portion of a page that you want to display. The, the thing to keep in mind about a variant, and this is the part that is in particularly confusing, is that what Page Manager does is it evaluates each variant in the order in which it is stacked. Um, and so it then applies whatever it, um, 
it d decides is the first one that, uh, that will work. Um, if it, if it passed, it, then it, it uses that variant. Here's a little bit of a better way to explain that. You have a page request, page manager checks to see if it's supposed to be used on that page request. It says, aha, uh -huh, I need to figure out how to display this page. So it checks the first variant, and if the p variant passes, then it renders the page. But if it didn't pass, then it'll check the next one, and again the next one until it determines to, um, to pass it. So the difference is, um, unlike some systems where it's cumulative, it's, a, it's an all or nothing. This one failed, so it's going to check the next one. And if, it, if this one passed, it doesn't care about the rest, and those, the, those variants are not, nothing in those variants is used. So um, that's, the, uh, that's the area where some people get a little bit confused. Another um, part of setting up a variant is the selection rule. It's a filter to tell if the variant should be replied, uh, applied. Um, context is part of that selection rule. It is a arbitrary um, way of selecting a single item on, um, for, uh, for using that um, variant. An argument is another way of selecting. It would be uh, like adding a placeholder or a wild card, if you will, if you're familiar with that idea. Uh, uh, an argument is taken from the URL, however, um, like, like this. This is the argument, and that little placeholder allows you to say then that all users in that path, all, like if this was, these were usernames, you, um, anything that, um, that had a path like that would um, it be accepted in, in that variant. A relationship is another selection rule, and it is um, taking any content that's related to the content that's being um, considered by the variant. So um, examples would be uh, um, other articles written by a, the same author or um, taxonomy terms that are shared by the content that's being displayed. Then you could um, tie other pieces of the page together. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of a closer look at how, a just a couple examples of of page manager and panels. What I have here is um, a dev site, that, and what I've done is I've just, through Devel, have added a bunch of dummy content. Um, you, you may have seen other demos that do essentially the same thing. All these are, are um, just, just a, um, a fresh install of, of, let me, is that, going off the screen there, or can you? Hmm. It's, it looks fine over there, but it's, well, it's, um, but my problem is that it's, this, uh, display is got thrown off by the um, projector. There, that's a little bit better. Okay, so um, what we've got is just a bunch of content. We've got, um, I didn't really do anything fancy, it's just either um, in Drupal 7 you've got articles and you've got basic pages. And I didn't add any new content types. There, the basic pages um, don't have images, and they don't have the author identified, the, um, and, and they don't have taxonomy, taxonomy displayed. In the articles, you've got um, taxonomy, you've got images, you've got the author displayed. And then there's some comments for each, um, each of those uh, articles. Let's take a look at something else that I did here, just so you'll have an idea 
Um, I added a couple of views. One is um, I created a view that shows the articles of an author. So it's just a basic list of, of articles, lists, um, and it, it makes use of an argument. Right here is the argument for the author's user ID so that if um, we'll just select author number four, or you can see that um, author number four wrote three articles. So that, what that's doing is that's creating a block. You can see that there. Then there is another view that is just a list of the most recent comments. And that is essentially just a um, uh, default um, view that comes with views that I enabled. So what we'll do first is we're going to use Page Manager. And as I said, Page Manager is just doing some checking to determine whether a page should be rendered and um, if it should be, how sh um, it's going to give it some uh, direction as to where it should be um, displayed. We will go to Pages, which is the menu item for Page Manager. Right now, when, when, when you install Page Manager, you get some um, possible um, presets that are um, currently disabled. And um, when, if you were to install Panels Everywhere, which is an additional, additional module, it, it adds one more preset here, and it's called the, the default layout. And the, in some cases, you can do everything you want with that one default layout and lots of um, variants. So you don't necessarily even have to use these other um, preset um, layout templates, um, or not layout templates necessarily, because this, we're talking about page manager here. There. Um, but anyway, templates. So now we're going to enable the node template. As you see, it's um, anything that has this path of node and then the node ID is going to um, be considered by page manager. Now, if we look at, let's say we go to one of these nodes, just by the mere turning on the um, page manager didn't affect the, the um, view at all. There's still the, the, the node and then the comments that are after it, and there's nothing that's, that's changed um, by, by that. What we're going to do now is edit this, and you now see um, this doesn't look so bad right now in its current form. But if you start adding variants and you have lots going on, you can see that this can become a very cluttered interface. And that's what I was talking about when I was talking about the UI. We're going to add a variant to start addressing how we want to manage this particular um, display. Let's just, um, the, the title here is really just for administrative purposes, it's just to help us in, in know. Um, what, what the purpose of this variant is. Um, we're going to redirect um, a, um, I don't know yet which one it's going to be. I'm going to be very specific. But we're going to redirect a, um, a, an article to user page. I already have panels. Um, module installed, so it is showing up there. But we're going to use if I didn't if I didn't have panels installed and I just wanted to use Page Manager, 
um, it would only give me the ability to do um, HTTP response code, which, like I said, is what um, um, is, is a redirect. We have the option of selecting um, selection rules and contacts here, but um, you don't even have to check those off and still be able to use them. Um, so uh, there's really no point in, I'm not sure why they do that since you can always add those later. Okay, so now we have to select what kind of response we want. Let's do a redirect. And I don't have to fill this in yet. I'm going to come back and fill this after I figure out what it, what it is that I'm redirecting. But I'm going to create the variant. So now a new area on this left side is created by, these are um, tabs, created for this variant. And you can see that the, the name that I gave it is there and then the, um, some uh, menu items. The summary um, is, well, just, ver just that. Um, it will display also here the path once we, if we dislike, uh, d give it a path. It, so everything that um, we might want to know about a variant is kind of displayed there. This is where we entered that information in general. Now we go to the selection rules. We're going to give it a context, and as I said, a context is a very specific um, a choice. It's a, um, it, can be, it can be multiples of the same thing, but it has to be very specific items. Let's, um, let's select, uh, well, I'm trying to remember how, what I did before. Um, Let's say a context exists. That, so that, what that means is now that we, I've said a context that exists, it creates an item here in the um, tab for defining what that context is. We're going to say that that context is a node. Again, the context is something that's fairly specific. So we're going to um, select a node. Um, let's select one that has an author. Um, well, come on. Or we could just select a, a number. We could say. I thought we could. Um, I'm not seeing, what I should be seeing here is, okay, here we go. We're going to pick this, this article by Kudi Jasuf. Oops. Sorry. Hmm. I guess it wants me to. There. Okay. What happens is um, that th this modal that is that is being used for this. This is also a part of CTools. CTools allows you to create uh, modal windows like that. And um, so that's something that um, as developers we can reuse that code in other um, parts of our site. So now um, let's select a relationship. We're going to choose the author of that node add the relationship. One of the things that 
um, is also going on with um, variance in the, the context here is that, um, okay, when I save this, we have lots of options for tokens that we can apply. So there is one right here that I want to use. And now what I want to do is go up here to general and add what we didn't have before, and that was the path. User. Oh, well, I thought I copied that. Try it again. Now you notice that anytime, I don't know if it'll, sh um, I'm gonna just click on update rather than update and save. You notice that right now this little indicator is appearing in the corner and that tells you that you have not really saved your settings. They are, they're being stored, but not stored in a way so that um, they will be there if you were to um, um, leave the site. So we wanna make sure, we wanna keep an eye on that. And ba the basic rule of thumb is just use the update and save all the time. You, you can always undo things, but um, you can forget to save something um, if you're not careful. So what we've done is we've created a redirect so that when this, this specific page is being um, viewed, rather than display that page, it's gonna display the user's page instead. I, I can't give you a specific use case in which that might exist, but um, we'll let, um, we're just gonna say that there is. Okay, so now let's go to, let's go over here and use a different, Find content. If I remember right, that was um, node 56. I remember that it was that guy, node 56. So let's look at that and see what happens if we, we get kicked instead to the user page. But if we were to look at any other page, oh, it looks like, well, this is live television, folks. It should have been very specific to that one. Thanks, Doug. All right, let's go back and take a look at our selection rules again. The node being viewed should be, okay. It, oh, it's, it, it, it is a context, and so then we gotta go take a look at the context, and the node should be a specific node. Ah, it is right there. All right. And the relationship should be there. Okay, something, maybe I didn't save it. Did I not? Because it says unchanged. And I haven't, didn't think I changed anything. 
Okay, it says definitely save there now. Let's go back and see what happens. If we go to any page. Hmm. Well, this all worked right when It's kicking, it's kicking all of them to the user's page instead of um, that specific one. And I, I'm honestly not seeing why. Well, I don't want to um, dwell on this too long. But that, I mean, that at least gives you an idea of the basic idea of what page manager is supposed to do. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that so it doesn't affect what we're going to do next. Because what we're going to do next is we're going to create a panel. And a panel is just, again, it's just taking page manager to the, to the next level where it's redirecting to um, a layout instead of just um, to a particular page. Um, it's a page with a specific layout. So we're going to add a new variant. And we're going to um, affect the um, article page. And this is going to be a panel. Again, we could select selection rules and context, but we don't have to because we ha still have the option of doing that down the road here. Um, actually, let's just let's go ahead and select them now. We're going to select a selection rule. And what that selection rule is, is a node type article. So what we're doing is any node that is an article is going to be affected by this new layout that we're going to give it. Now here's where we get to the layout. And this is where, when most people think of panels, this is what they, they think of, is the actual being able to change a layout. I'm, I'm actually going to, rather, I'm going to go with a two-column layout. You get, out of the box, you get lots of um, types of layouts. Some of them are uh, multiple panes um, in different columns and you also have the ability to create some custom ones as well. I'm going to just go with the basic two column layout. You also have the ability of giving specific CSS classes um, or even body, body classes to the um, or remove, remove or add body classes to your page. Um, you can add IDs, and it even lets you add um, inline code, although it's important to note that adding inline code is not considered a best practice. Um, it is uh, there, especially if you need to make a quick fix or something on that page. Then, also, um, let's see. No. Oh, I, I didn't save it yet. Okay, that's why it's not giving me. Create the variant. There we go. Okay, so now, refreshing what we did was we selected that this layout will be um, for articles, and we haven't given it any other sele um, selection rules like a context um, at this point. So now we're going to add content to this panel, and this is the um, user interface for panels. 
Right? And there, you'll see that over on this side, there is a little gear that we select to add content. And when we select that, it pops, pops up a modal that gives us a vertical tabs to select from lots of different um, pieces of what would go into building a page. Um, just to take a look at one, page elements would be um, especially used in if you were using pa panels anywhere where you wanted to have all of the surrounding elements like the header where you've got a logo and a, perhaps a slogan um, or things in the footer, um, your um, navigation and what have you. You also have a separate menus tab which is the same idea um, that's pulling specifically from the menus uh, list that you've created within your site. Um, activity would be things like who's online. These are things that have come out of the box with um, Drupal, but there may also be other modules that are adding. Anything that Drupal can see gets um, winds up in this uh, modal as options you can select. In here were, um, are all the elements that go into the node, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select node content. I don't need it to link to the node because what I'm going to I'm not I'm talking about the full page, so I'm going to change this build mode to full content. And um, we don't need add comment links and read more links because we're still talking about the full page. And there's nothing, there's no, there's no other modules that are enabled to create extras, so it doesn't really matter whether we're using it there or not. We're going to select that. And so now you see the, um, th that content, the node, um, content area has been filled in. Let's go ahead and add to that one other pane, and that is the comments, which are from the same place. Actually, that was the wrong one. I selected the wrong one. I want the node comments. Actually, we should have the comment form, shouldn't we? Otherwise, pe new people won't be able to add comments. Be like, okay, so we're going to add that. And let's, for that one, let's say, um, rather than the, 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 out of the default, the uh, title of that is um, uh, comments. Let's change that to uh, make your voice or just for fun, it shows you the flexibility, and um, let's put the form above the, the comments so that we can encourage people to add comments. You know, see, well, all I did was I just grabbed that and dragged it to where I wanted it. I could have also dragged it into another column. Over here, we're going to add a couple of the blocks that I talked about that were being created by views. And we're, we will find those in miscellaneous. Miscellane uh, yes. <laughs> um, miscellaneous is kind of a catch-all place, as you would expect from a name like miscellaneous. But a lot of modules that create blocks will um, their, their blocks will show up in miscellaneous as well. So we're going to select um, the articles by author. And for now, we're going to save that. And then um, add another block from miscellaneous, which is recent comments. All right, we're going to save an update. So what you see is we've laid out 
the portion of the page that is the content area. We've added um, a, another column to that though, so rather than the typical layout where you'd have to use bl the block system to display blocks, we're using panels to add blocks to the page. So now if we go to a page like this, and this is not gonna be the best one because it's got a, such a large image, but um, finish that. You can now see that we have added two blocks to that page. And there are the co comments and um, the comment form. Oh, you know what, I didn't realize this, but um, apparently comments comes with, so there's, there's the one where we changed the make your voice heard. Now that is out of the box, it says articles by this author. Um, however, that right now, those are, I can tell you that those are not all the articles by this author. Um, the author is whatever. <laughs> I'm not going to try to pronounce that. But um, I'm pretty sure that, no, it is right. Okay. I thought I needed to make a change, but I didn't. Okay. So let's, let's do one other um, ch change to this um, layout that we've done. We're going to go back to that, back to the context here. You remember we had a bunch of tokens down here. We're going to select node author. Go back to our content. We're going to override this title, add that, finish. Update and save again. And when we refresh this, we get that header changed. So that's the basic idea behind page manager and panels. Um, there's a lot more to it than that, of course, um, as you might be willing to um, presume. And um, I guess now it's time for some questions. Answers, jokes. Yes. How uh, like the larger the actual job is there on the main header versus more of them? Um, other than another kind of section this morning that has the question box where you use the handle blah, blah, blah. But then while the massive is easy to read, while mass saying this paragraph goes to these and ignore the rest of the panels, is this make all the cool kids ignore it too? Actually, no, it's not either or, and it's, and it, and, um, okay, yes, absolutely. The question is uh, about views versus panels, and does views replace panels, or is, it pa is views better than panels? And actually, I think that's a, a, a little bit of a misunderstanding, because um, views is a different type of displays. What views is, um, is, essentially just writing database queries. It's, it gives you an interface to do that. So um, if you, it uh, then allows you to combine um, pieces of content together to create either blocks or pages. Whereas panels is a way of displaying in different regions of the page. So the two work very well together as what I was really doing was that those two side blocks were created by views. 
you don't have to have views to do panels and you don't have to have panels to do views, but the two of them work very well together. Does that make sense? Is that Yeah, it, views, um, w one of the things that views will do will create full pages of lists and tables and you can also then use views to do things like slideshows and maps and so it's very flexible um, and, and, it will, and you can put that content in blocks but you can't um, very easily, I mean views will even let you with, with the views attached, you can actually attach in different parts of the page, you can, uh, and, and some layout tricks, you can um, get, get that organized so that views is doing a lot of that, but panels is so much more in terms of being able to um, affect not just what views can see, but every part of what Drupal can see. Um, in your layout. Views cannot see some things um, in Drupal. Um, it, it, it can see what are called what first class, um, first class, what do they call that? Con content elements. Um, it, it can see uh, nodes and, and, um, and, and basically what's in a node and, that's, and it can see users and it can see taxonomy but views cannot see blocks. So you can't create a view of blocks. It can't, you can't create a view of menu items. You can create a menu with views, but you can't create, um, uh, at least that's been true uh, up till now. I think as, as Drupal 7 brings in the idea of entities, then that, that, that becomes more blurred. Whereas panels, it will see everything that Drupal can see. And you can move it around um, at will and slide it around and it's very visual. Um, so that's really the, the, the big differences. Yes? if you're using panels everywhere. Panels everywhere is another module. It doesn't get shipped with, I don't think it gets shipped with, block, with panels. Um, and it is, um, it, it's dependent on panels as you might expect. Um, and so um, it also requires a little bit of a change in your theme so that the, you are um, using a theme that has eliminated on its own placing any um, regions for blocks to go in and for menu items to go in. I mean, you, actually you could do both if you wanted, but you're kind of defeating the purpose of panels everywhere if you do that. So essentially what you're create, your, your, your template for the layout is just the the wrapper for the page, and then panels everywhere manages everything inside it. Uh, no, no longer. Not once you put a, turn on panels, it do, they don't. That that whole idea is no longer because the block system is not being used. And the, it's, the issue is is um, the the regions that are declared in the template, not so much the um, block system itself. Any other questions? Yes. Mm, no, I don't, um, I think there are ways in which you could include the well, there are, it seems like there are ways, well, you can do multiple arguments. You can have, you can have, um, I 
Jo. Oh, well, well, for one thing, um, the, I didn't mention this, but panels lets you re reuse blocks multiple times on the same page if you want, and the block system will not let you do that. Um, I, I think that, but I, I don't think that really gets at what you're asking. Um, I didn't quite follow exactly how that page is laid out, but I think that, um, I think if you're, if you're, Relationships and your context, um, or I mean your your selection rules um, are laid out right. I don't. I don't think you would. I don't think you would need need an or statement. Okay. Okay, well remember that the, 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 um, the argument is coming from the URL, so in, are, are you, you're talking about different pages of... Okay. Okay, so, uh, okay. Um, I got gotcha. you. Well, you, what you would do then, it's not, I think I'm following you now. So you, what you'd really do is you'd have two variants. One would be specific to the path. And the other would be, say, specific to uh, like a content type or uh, whatever that's then using the relationship. Yeah. 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 And one thing I didn't really get into, I was trying to get everything, make sure I got them within an hour, but you are able to set individual settings within those panes, even though your variant may be for a whole page, you can you can set a um, a let's say a, like a, a permissions based setting on um, a, one particular pane where everybody can see the whole page but only certain people with a certain um, uh, role can see that particular pane in it. Yes. The panes are the individual pieces within the regions. Clear as mud. Any other questions? And I'm I'm sorry about the error on on my page manager demo. I it shows you what happens when you try to make last minute adjustments in your presentation at two o'clock in the morning.
plant stacks are everywhere. This is the way to, to better utilize uh, all your resources and it makes managing all your resources pretty easy. All of the innovation is happening in open source. The, the collaborative nature and of the uh, you know of the community and, and the speed at which these uh, these you know these these deficiencies these bugs are getting discovered and then fixed is a uh, thing that really shows the power of the you know of the open source community. It is global, and it's definitely because of the users. Community people are extremely friendly and uh, always ready to help. If you go on to IRC any day, you'll see these guys helping each other out and they're all doing it like in a selfless manner. The product is transparent for everyone. Everyone can look at the code base. Um, everyone can see how CloudStack is, is being built. Nothing, nothing is proprietary. Everything is open. In many ways, it's absolutely vital to the, to the ongoing health of CloudStack. The most exciting event uh, in recent memory for me uh, was our first developer boot camp. Uh, and you know, our call gave people, I think, maybe two weeks notice to come attend. I was expecting 25 or, or 30 people. Uh, so we ended up with uh, 87 <laughs> people uh, and had to go get more chairs uh, into the room twice. Everything within cloud computing is commodity and is open source. And so I, I don't think that you will, uh, you, you'll see anywhere where open source is not pervasive in cloud computing. And so I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's an assumption. I think when you talk about cloud computing, you're really talking about open source cloud computing. CloudStack is a robust solution for large deployments. You have dozens of data centers and thousands of servers in each data center. Is, uh, these um, uh, hardware is going to fail and CloudStack is designed to handle number one that mass scale number two it's designed to handle the failure that inevitably happens uh, in large deployments. We started working on CloudStack over four years ago uh, and you know it was the original set of people working on it uh, had a background of delivering software to telcos and service providers Lots of QA, lots of users actually using it. High availability is a key feature. Uh, multiple hypervisor support. Uh, different network models. You can pick up whatever suits you better. Cloudstack management server can be deployed in different physical machines. It definitely has a huge footprint. It's being deployed everywhere. There's a major movie studio that uh, um, they were using CloudStack, they were using it to transcode video. And I thought that was terribly fascinating. What I found more fascinating is what they did during lunch, where they would spin up uh, you know, 50 or 60 game servers, and then as soon as lunch was over, they would destroy all the instances and go back to doing real work. CloudStack is vast. Uh, it touches so many different aspects, and there's no one person that's kind of like a master of all those realms. I think CloudStack as a project is going to be uh, one of the leaders simply because it's some of the most featureful and, and, uh, and robust platforms out there. I don't see any limits to the cloud stack. When we created Asterisk over a decade ago, we could not have imagined that Asterisk would not only become the most widely adopted open source communication software on the planet, but that it would impact the entire industry in the way that it has. Today, Asterisk has found its way into more than 170 countries and virtually every Fortune 1000 company. The success of Asterisk has enabled a transition of power from the hands of the traditional proprietary phone vendors into the hands of the users and administrators of phone systems. Using this power, our customers have created all sorts of business-changing applications, from small office phone systems to mission-critical call centers to international carrier networks. In fact, there's even an entire country whose communications infrastructure runs on asterisks. 
The gym has always been about creating technology that expands communications capabilities in ways that we could never have imagined. And that's part of what's game changing about Digium. Today, we're doing it again. This time by introducing a new family of HDIP phones that extends control of the user all the way to the desktop. The launch of these new products represents the next phase in Digium's history of innovation. These are the first and only IP phones designed to fully leverage the power of Asterisk. When we first discussed our expectations for building a family of phones for use with Asterisk, our requirements were pretty simple. We asked the team to build the phones such that they were easy to install, integrate, provision, and use. I think you'll soon agree our engineers have delivered on that goal. User feedback is validating that when it comes to operation with Asterisk based systems, including our own SwitchFox based product, these are the easiest to use, best integrated, most interoperable products on the market today. The Digium family of phones will initially include three IP desk phones, uniquely designed to complement any Asterisk or SwitchFox based solution. These phones are different for a number of reasons. First, they're exclusively designed for use with Asterisk. Secondly, we've made it really easy to auto-discover and provision the phones. Next, we've made it easy for the phones to access information inside of Asterisk, allowing tight coupling between an application and the phone. Additionally, we've created an applications engine that allows users and developers to create and run their own apps on the phone. And finally, we've done all of this at a very compelling price point. At Digium, we're always thinking of ways to give our customers the best value in business phone systems and also give them the power to create their own solutions for any communications challenge. We'll continue to push the boundaries, not only to make Asterisk cooler and faster and more technologically feature rich, but to make Asterisk and VoIP communications even easier. And together, we'll change the way the world communicates. Again.